What's up, guys? My name is Mikey, the host of Photos by Mikey podcast, and I got a couple awesome wedding photographers with me today. To my left, I got Nicholas Tatarski. What up? To my right, I have Theo Tran. Hello. So without further ado, let me introduce them to you guys real quick. So they are local photographers here in the IE Inland Empire in Southern California. But I think it'll probably be better if they introduce themselves so we can kind of get to know them a little bit more. So let's start with Nick to my left. What's up, everybody? I'm Nicholas Zatarski, a Southern California wedding and portrait photographer based in Riverside, California. Um, I've been shooting weddings now for a little over three years, started in 2020 as far as weddings go and portraits in 2019. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, let's start with Theo to my right here. Hey everyone, my name's Theo Tran. I'm a wedding and engagement photographer based out of Moreno Valley, California. I've been doing it since 2021. That's when I decided to go into wedding photography. However, I picked up my first camera in 2018. Yeah. Awesome. I think it'll be a great idea to kind of just get to know Nick and Theo a little bit more and how they got started because we all come we all come from different walks of life right we start at different times of our life so um, like for myself you know I've been shooting weddings for over seven years now and I started differently than Nick and Theo so so Nick how did you like get how did you get into wedding photography like what was the first time where you maybe you had shot a wedding or you got involved in a wedding so that was in <clears throat> in 2020, and it was actually a referral uh, from a friend to photograph his brother's wedding. And because um, COVID had just started, all that stuff was going down. They had already planned it, and they're like, we're still going to shoot, you know, and um, their wedding photographer had canceled on them. And me personally, I was going – I never thought I would be in weddings – and um, I thought I was going to be in studio and landscape and all this other stuff. And um, growing up, my background, I have a lot of family, a lot of weddings. And uh, I, was, I was like, all right, I'll give this a try. Shot it, really remembered how much I loved weddings and, you know, going to those things as I was growing up. And I just, it, I just flowed with it and absolutely love it. And got really into it in 2020 and a little bit towards the end, I had met you because I really wanted to evolve in, in the weddings and uh, that's how I got, that's how I got started. Referral from a friend. <laughs> awesome. How about you, Theo? Yeah. So actually in a similar way, <clears throat> my first wedding was actually a, a previous client because I ended up doing their engagement photos. It was a, a friend of a friend or a coworker actually. And um, she referred me to this couple and I did their engagement photos and they were very happy with their engagement photos or before they even saw the photos, they were just happy with how the session went at, um, we did it at Joshua Tree and uh, they took me out to dinner that night and paid for my dinner as well. Oh, nice. And uh, during that dinner, we had a conversation actually and uh, they were saying that they liked the experience, they liked me as a person and they liked my portfolio that I had, even though it had no weddings. And they asked me that same night that I did their engagement photos to actually shoot their wedding. It was a informal conversation. So we had a meeting about it later on, but yeah. And then uh, I did that wedding and it was super chaotic, but even though it was chaotic and stressful and I was more tired than I ever been doing like a nine to five job, it was, uh, it was really fun and I loved the experience of it. And I knew I could learn a lot. And it was a, it would be a fun journey to go on. What what gear did you have, Theo, on your first wedding? My first wedding, I believe, I think I was still shooting Nikon for my first wedding. So I shot on a Nikon Z6. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah that, I that, think those are, those are just coming out, the Nikon mirrorless series. Yeah, I think well, that's one of the first ones they came out with, I yeah. believe, right? Um, and that yeah. was like a, a couple of years ago. Um, so let me ask you this, like, I know like weddings are very physically demanding and mentally demanding. Did you see your, did you ever see yourself like actually being a wedding photographer, like even before that? Like, so it was always on my mind because I enjoy shooting portraits mm -hmm. mostly. So I knew that weddings involve a lot of portraits and weddings also are pretty lucrative. So it was some 
it was something in my mind. However, I didn't think I would label myself as a wedding photographer. I thought it'd just be another, like something I do every now and then, but it turned into something more. How about you, Nick? Did I ever see myself? Yeah, like, I mean, <clears throat> let's say, like, you know, like everybody starts photography as a hobby, right? Right. And, but most of the time, you're just kind of thinking about, like, just doing it as a hobby. And yeah. and then, in you know, even for me, when I first did my, like, wedding, I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is insane. Like, so, like, I didn't really think about myself, like, oh, I'll, I'm going to start doing this for sure, for sure. Like, I still had to think about it. So like, did you ever like thought about it? Like even your first one, like, oh, this is what I'm going to do for, you know, forever. In the beginning, no. Um, I, before I shot my first wedding in the beginning, yeah, no, I, I was really into the, uh, like the studio stuff and then going out in the outdoors landscape, you know, we'll get into that in a little bit as far as hiking and all that. But um, yeah, no, I, I never thought about it. And when I, when I was asked, I was like, I, I honestly didn't even know what was happening in like wedding world and all mm -hmm. that. I just know that, you know, we all get together once in a while and there's a family member or a friend getting married, you know, and I never didn't think about as far as, you know, what it could be. And when I shot my first wedding, uh, I knew right off bat I wanted to be a wedding photographer. I actually really love it. I, I thrive with, with people, you know, socializing and, going out there, getting a party with everyone. And, you know, I'm kind of a romantic too. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I love watching people's love, you know, and, right, right. you know, and I love capturing those moments. And a lot of that is candid moments. And that's, you know, that's, I, I kind of actually, I'm getting more into the studio stuff lately. And, you know, as far as my portraits go um, and my style, I'm very, very candid or controlled candid. Uh, I love that look and I thought I, I thought I was about that other stuff. And then, yeah, no, once I caught, especially once I looked at my first wedding in my gallery and I was looking at the, the candid photos of, of the mom crying and the kids laughing, I, I was hooked. Yep. Nice. Um, so, you know, my, my podcast really about helping other photographers, like, you know, um, create like a really amazing career in business and make sure it's profitable. So, so the next question I want to ask you guys is basically like looking back, right. After doing this for a couple of years, like what would you have done differently knowing what you know now? Let's start with Theo on that one. All right, guys, back for the third time here. Um, we had a, another minor glitch in the matrix, but Theo was just basically breaking down the reasons what the reasons why he would do differently things differently before, you know, from the things he has learned over the years. So kind of like get to that tail end, Theo, about what you were explaining. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, so yeah, I was just saying I would really like just reach out to more wedding photographers and learn from them and gain the experience because I know as a couple or if myself, looking at it from the couple's perspective, I know I wouldn't want to book a photographer or a wedding photographer that doesn't have much experience with weddings. I would be more trustworthy and feel more comfortable knowing the photographer I'm booking has more experience, has a bigger portfolio, knows what they're doing and isn't just winging it on the day of like I did for my first wedding, if I'm being honest. So yeah, I would just reach out to more wedding photographers in my area and gain the experience first instead of relying on hope. Great advice. How about you, Nick? <clears throat> Going off with you. Um, I, I agree with that. I would be hitting up as many uh, local wedding photographers that I can. And even those who maybe I'm watching on YouTube or anything, leave comments. These people do answer sometimes as a, as a photographer, we get into, you know, when we get into these, um, profession or into that profession of weddings, you, you're going in because you, you know, you think it, you know, your work looks good. The money's there. If you know how to use a camera, I would say the thing I didn't do that, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I kind of got to the game a little late is take a class on business. Um, learn everything there is to learn about a business because wedding photography is a business. You have clients, you, you know, how to, how to communicate with those clients effectively, how to make your business more effective, more, uh, easy, you know, what other, what products are there out there to help you with your business? Because once you do get going and you have that, um, 
that portfolio going, you will bring in clients and they will have, you know, can you, can you deliver what you're saying you, you offer, you know, um, can you keep up with the, um, uh, with the emails, the booking, you know, their contracts, you know, um, uh, when I first started, I didn't, I kind of briefly saw stuff like what you should do. And I watched older videos and stuff like that. And so I had a little file cabinet with, you know, paper contracts and it actually, because I met Mike, um, he told me all about HoneyBook <laughs> and, uh, and that it's a huge one. Um, and yeah, the whole business aspect, you have to do your taxes, business license, um, you know, different areas that you go to shoot some of these places, you need permits, you know, like you need, you know, most of these venues now, especially after everything that's been going down, um, they want their photographers to have, uh, and all their vendors actually to have, uh, their permits, um, I'm not permits, uh, business licenses and insurance, you know, think about things like that, you know, insurance, stuff like that. I was going into a lot of this stuff doing during COVID during, um, the, you know, the heart of it in 2020. And when I went into it, I was, uh, doing a lot of backyard weddings and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, where only a few people could be there, or even if they were venues, only a certain amount of people are allowed to be there. And now that everything's kind of going back to, um, you know, well, going to where things are opening and we're able to do this now there, you know, there's a lot more people there's, you know, mask requirements are no, no longer really a thing anymore. Um, and you know, they require that kind of stuff, your business license, your insurance, um, you know, websites, you know, think about websites, like how are you going to build a website? My first website, <laughs> if you remember Mike, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, all that kind of stuff, like really look into the business side of it and maybe take a class or, you know, watch YouTube and it doesn't, it doesn't, even if it doesn't go towards uh, wedding photography, just business in general, how to, how to, you know, um, be a person that is starting their business and dealing, going to deal with clients or, or I should say have clients and, uh, uh, yeah. Let me ask you this, Theo, did, did you have a contract for your first wedding? For my first wedding, I did actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, I had okay. a contract invoice because I started doing that when I started doing more uh, graduation photos. I actually started contracts for my first paid shoot ever. That's yeah, because I was like, I, I wanted, I just don't want to be held liable or sued for anything. Like, I didn't want to take that risk. Um, to piggyback off what you were saying, though, I think, um, I think majority of people can learn to take really good photos, and I underestimated the fact, like, how much business there is to wedding photography yeah i think most people can take really really good photos but the business side and the client relationship is something that i didn't put much thought into in the beginning yeah but now i'm realizing like everyone takes good photos everyone has pretty good portfolio mm -hmm. but it's just how you're managing your client relationships and how you're doing the business with them and and making that a priority a absolutely. Like uh, what Nick was saying, like HoneyBook, right? So HoneyBook is an online software. It's basically like a client management system. So, you know, for those that don't have like, like an online management system, like tracking everything on, a on Excel is fine for the beginning. But when you get really busy, when you have like 10, 15 people contacting you like the same month, it's, it's going to get kind of unorganized, right? Or just a little bit more inefficient because you're kind of doing the same thing over and over and it's not automated. So with like like software now, like it just makes it easier for, for you to send like contracts online instead of like paper documents, right? I mean, that's like, that's like old school. Like, you know, if you don't have like online contracts, it's like, it, it just makes your life a lot harder, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. you, what you got to do, you got to print that out and what are you going to do? You have to meet, you probably have to meet the client to get the signature or email, you know, the PDF document. So yeah, for those yeah. wedding photographers that are not on HoneyBook, it is a lifesaver. It will, you can pull up your calendar, see what you have booked, uh, see what payments are due. Uh, it'll send reminders automatically if you want. You can customize those emails, invoice, contracts, proposals, signatures on your emails. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's a real amazing product. And yeah, doing something like Excel, it, it can be, you know, pretty great in the beginning. But yeah, even when you have, 
more than just a few, especially wedding clients, you know, where you are probably most likely having a um, security deposit and you are having, you know, multiple payments break down. Some of the, some clients want to make multiple payments, you know, um, it's just so much more legit setting that up with a client, kind of getting a payment plan going. And then it either comes out of their card automatically if they choose, or they could just go on, on their email, click it, make a payment. All of a sudden you look, Oh, I have a payment and it was on time, you know, or if it doesn't, it'll send an automatic email and stuff like that. So legit. Yeah. yeah. So something that I experienced because I just joined HoneyBook a few months ago off of uh, Mike's recommendation um, is that the couples are really happy with the experience, like how easy it is to access their contracts, look at everything. It's a, a really good experience on the client side as well. Yeah, yeah. that's another good tip too, Theo, because, uh, you know, aside from, you know, taking photos, right? Yeah is the customer service aspect or the CRE, right? The client relationship that we have with each of our clients and how can we provide the best experiences. So like that's some, something that a lot of people don't think about, right? Yeah. It's on the back end. So like if you're sending paper contracts, it just makes things a little bit more difficult with the client because, I mean, they're already dealing with like, I don't know, five to seven other vendors for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it as simple as possible for them to make payments, automate, automate the payments for them, it's like they don't have to think, think about anything else. And they're like, oh, man, this is awesome. Like I, I, I have everything like locked down with my wedding photographer. Yeah. Um, so that kind of ties my, to my next question is like, how do you guys provide like, you know, the best possible experiences for your clients? Let's start with Nick. On the spot. I got, I got used <laughs> to the video starting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it all starts with, for me personally, I've come to a place, and this is kind of some more advice for those wedding photographers, and they'll probably hear this from other wedding photographers and think like, I'm trying to get started. But for me, it's, I, I'll i set up a quick phone call, kind of get an idea of where, of where we where we stand if we click. That's actually really important because if you click with your client, you know, you, you know, you guys vibe, the ex a whole experience is going to be, you know, on a whole nother level. A lot of, a lot of photographers, including myself in the beginning, wanted to just to take everybody. And I have had some pretty crazy experiences by doing that. And, and now, you know, uh, my clients that come to me, they see my website and they kind of have an idea of what they're, you know, what they're going to, uh, uh, you know, what they're going to expect and what kind of person I am, you know, I've put a lot more heart and soul into my, to my website, you know, so that's, that's, that starts off everything. They see my website, they have an idea, it's right there in front of them. They kind of, they kind of know like my style, what kind of person I am. You can go to my about me, you can, you know, get an idea. And then when they come to me, I'll set up that phone call. We'll kind of go over everything, over everything real, you know, real quickly, the process, you know, kind of, you know, reassure them, you know, that my goal is to make this their, the easiest, the quickest, the, you know, funnest experience they will have the whole wedding to set up, you know, that they'll be able to tell everyone, yeah, the photographer, oh yeah, he's, he, he's take, you know, he took care of us, the, everything was legit, booking was all done online, um, super cool, you know, or even for those, like, even if I did, cause I have made recommendations for other photographers who, who I feel that those clients would fit, you know, and I'll even tell them that. And I've gotten five star reviews on my Google from these clients that I referred to others because I was honest with them, you know, Hey, you know, you seem like this kind of couple, you know, I think you might vibe with this photographer, you know, a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm kind of more, you know, candid, you know, a little more on, on this side of, of the stuff they want. They're looking for something a little more of like a, like a Vogue S wedding or, or a, uh, a Vogue S by the way, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, something more posed, you know, stuff like that, you know, studio style, you know, and I have, you know, we have a, a whole plethora of photographers that we know of, you know, and, and I, I don't mind, you know, getting my ideal client as far as, as far as that goes, you know, um, and you know, the more and more, you know, photographers out there that are listening that, um, that understand that and start to, you know, you, you will, you'll experience what it's like to, you know, not click with a client, you know, and just accept the job anyways, cause it's money. Um, put yourself first, 
you know, I feel that's a very important one. So put yourself first, find out whether or not you even, you know, you click and vibe with this, with these people, you know, um, you know, and then from there, you know, talk about the experience, set up a meeting, you know, I try to, especially with things that are, you know, kind of opening up more and more, um, you know, being able to travel to each other and meet up in person, go to a coffee shop, have some coffee, um, uh, have some food, some lunch, you know, or I've even, uh, recently I did a hike, a uh, hike in, um, consultation, you know, we found out we hiked, you know, and so we went on a, um, small hike, just had some fun, got to know each other really well. And it was, uh, it was a great experience, but, uh, set up a meeting, a uh, consultation, get to meet with both the couple or, you know, both the, um, bride and groom or, um, the, just the couple getting married and, you know, go from there and talk to them, see if you vibe with both of them again, you know, it's all about vibing and, and then, um, but yeah, being able to offer those services, you know, oh yeah, everything's done online. You know, I'll send you an email with a proposal, you know, that will have a, a breakdown of, you know, the invoice, the contract, you know, the ability to pay online and, um, you know, explain that to them, that, that immediately, you know, they're like, wow, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, they, I've heard, you know, stories where like they have a little receipt from their other vendor <laughs> and, um, they're just, you know, they're amazed, you know, cause yeah, they want to hands off or even better yet, they're coming from out of state or I'm booking an, in another state. I just did a wedding in New York in December, you know, and got everything all set up online and, um, everything was, you know, FaceTime online and got out there, met with them. And, uh, you know, so really, you know, making it an easier experience for my, for my couples as easy as possible. And, um, that way all the, all that other stuff can get, you know, done and out of the way, but we can really connect with, with each other on that, on that level. You know, I love connecting with my clients, asking them, you know, like how long they've been together, you know, like, what are they looking for? You know, what kind of people are they talking just like this? You know, some of my, some of my consultations will go, you know, some, some can be short. Sometimes they'll go up to, you know, two hours <laughs> with these clients, you know, we end up becoming really good friends. And then by that time, um, you know, we'll set up an engagement session, um, uh, which I do include engagements with all my wedding collections and I'll, we'll set up an engagement session. And by that time, they're both super excited and setting it up. You know, we talk about how that's going to go, how they can use those photos. And uh, I'll try to move this a little bit more this way. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll set that up and we have we have a blast talking about, you know, what we're going to do for the engagement, you know. And, you know, I, I reassure them it'll give them an idea of, you know, what how it is to work with me and stuff like that. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Theo? Yeah, just to piggyback off that answer <laughs> um yeah so i think like building a relationship that is deeper than just a business relationship with your couples is extremely important because uh you want to be very personable you want to know them as a couple and of course they want to know you because if they know you and they're comfortable with you that just makes everything much easier especially on the day of so i think just building that personal relationship with your couples and clients are, are is very very important it makes everything go smoothly. And then um, leading up to the wedding day, I think planning and planning ahead and over planning is way better than under planning and not being ready the day of. So over plan as much as you can at the end of the day of just let everything go and go with the day so that the couple doesn't have to think about it. You have everything planned. They know what's going to happen. They know what to expect. So there's nothing if anything goes wrong, then it was out of everyone's control, you know? It's not going to be too upsetting, hopefully. And uh, another thing is just knowing the right questions to ask your couples when they're booking you. Because um, the the second couple I booked for, my, for a wedding, actually, um, I prepared so much for the phone call because uh, opposite of what Nick said in the beginning of the podcast where he he thrives with people, he's comfortable, that's where he loves to be. I am extremely, extremely introverted. I don't like crowds. I don't like making conversation. Um, it's hard even to talk to couples and for them to reach out. And even phone calls give me some sort of anxiety. So I planned ahead. I wrote down all my questions on the notes app in my phone that I was going to ask. And uh, 
I ended up calling them and I went through my list of questions. And at the end, they were like, wow, like we already talked to like eight other photographers and didn't ask us the same questions you did. And just based off of that, they were already ready to book just after that one phone call because I asked the right questions. I made it personal. I asked how long they've been together and how they've met and simple questions like that. The other photographers just didn't ask. So building a personal relationship and knowing what to ask your couples to get them to trust you and be comfortable is, is extremely important. I think. Yeah. That, that, are, that, yeah. Sorry to get uh, you off. I was going to uh, say, ahead, I was just going to yeah. say really quick to go off of that. Yeah. You're the couples are making a huge decision, you know, with all their vendors, of course, but their, phot- their photos and video that will last them their life. And, um, you know, asking them and, you know, building that relationship with them is very important because these are, you know, they are people when they're, you know, this, you're capturing their love. Absolutely. And I'm going to, I kind of also want to piggyback on what you get, both of you guys are saying too, is because, you know, like as wedding photographers, right. We, um, are spending most of the day with them, right. More than any other vendor, more than the DJ, maybe not as much, well, maybe even more than the planner, right? Because the planner is running around, you know, dealing with other vendors and she's doing all the coordination. But we're one of the few vendors that actually from beginning to end, we spend most of the day with them, you know, from the getting ready to the reception, to the family photos. So we're even talking to everybody Mm -hmm. to, you know, to coordinate photos and stuff like that. So, you know. Very intimate stuff. Yeah, very Mm -hmm. intimate. You know, we're getting close, you know, to take photos sometimes. And so it is very important when they make that decision that they find the right photographer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, both of you guys said amazing things. I think it's very, very practical and very important when you guys are, you know, consulting with your your clientele is that you have to kind of like break down your walls a little bit and also have that conversation to get to know them better, right? Because sometimes some clients may not be your ideal client. Mm -hmm. And you'll know too, like when you have that first conversation, like, oh, maybe it's not, maybe not even the right fit. And, and so, so let me ask you guys this. So in terms of like your ideal clients, right? Is there anything you guys ask specifically regarding your clients during that consultation? Like any specific questions you guys ask to kind of really connect with them more? Yeah, I will uh, make sure I'm nice and close. A lot of times I'll even ask what they're not looking for. Um, You know, what are things, have they talked to other wedding photographers, you know, how did that go? What are some flags? You know, what are, um, yeah. when I ask what they're, what they're looking for, you know, uh, or I'll, I'll ask what they're looking for, you know, what, um, what style are they, are they into, you know, what kind of, what kind of people are they, you know, uh, just even the personal questions help, help like, you know, especially where I'm at today. Um, you know, I kind of just, just meeting somebody right off bat, you know, it's like, okay, I kind of, I kind of, I get these people, (laughs) um, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll ask things such as, you know, like I said, you know, what are they looking for? What are their, what are their ideal wedding? Do they have any ideas, um, saved like anything from Pinterest or Instagram do, you know, I'm kind of, I'll look at it and, you know, give an idea of whether, you know, it, it's like mine, you know, because obviously they're coming to me because they, you know, they, they saw my, they saw my work and they, they really liked it, you know, and, I immediately let them know, you know, this is me. This is my, this is how I'm, who I'm going to be. This is how, how it'll go. You know, I let them know, you know, how the day will go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Theo. <laughs> so I think, I think for me, one of the first questions I ask my couples when they reach out, we have that first call or meeting or anything is, um, I ask them why they reached out to me in the first place. I ask what, was it my biography? Was it my social media? Was it just my portfolio strictly? So I find out why they even reached out in the first place because if it's, if they like my style, then that's already a good sign, right? And then I ask, do you prefer more candid or more posed? Because if it's more posed, then I might, maybe refer to someone else because I right. prefer a more candid style of wedding photography. Cause as I said, I'm more introverted. So I like capturing those moments. I like 
the emotional moments in between the bigger ones, you know? So I just asked my couples, like, sorry, I'm thinking too. Are you um, good? Right? It's, like, <laughs> it's hard to think on the spot. Yeah. Um, Do they like flash photography? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. anything Natural like that. Light. Like, um, yeah. just what their preferences are, really, and if they align with what I like as well. Like, for example, I think for me, I've done church weddings. They're not a preference of mine, if I'm being honest. I'll do them always, but, um, like, I'll ask if they even want to do, if they're having a church wedding, what kind of ceremony they plan to have, what traditions they're going to be doing, maybe, and just if they align with me or if I want to do it, then I will. But yeah, it's just more like a, a vibe check with the couple and seeing if we match energy even during that phone call. No, those are great. Yeah. You want to say something, Nick? Yeah, I'll even ask them what kind of music they're into. That kind of gives me an idea as well, you know, um, which is might sound kind of funny, but... Um, you know, I kind of want to, I want to be able to have fun too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. What kind of music are they into? You know, like what, you know, yeah, those personal questions. And, you know, if I find we're similar wavelengths, you know, I kind of, I'll, I'll give suggestions or I'll, you know, I'll sh give them ideas or even talk about, you know, um, I'll, or I'll even ask them like, what, uh, what things do they have planned during the wedding? You know, like kind of, have them open up to me about, you know, what they got going on for the wedding and, uh, you know, how far they're into to planning and stuff. Do they have a planner? You know, like we said earlier and, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll ask them, you know, like, like I was saying, are they, cause me personally, I, I do a, a bit of both, you know, uh, natural and flash photography and, um, it, uh, you know, I let them know, like, do I have that, do I have that kind of freedom, you know, and even that those answers will give me a better idea of, you know, my client and then, you know, it also help them, you know, kind of go forward with, they want to select me or even for the next photographer, you know, uh, most of my clients there, they're coming to me, they're talking to three or four other photographers at a time, you know, and I even will go out of my way to help them as far as like, questions to ask those photographers in, you know, because the truth is, is I do value these, you know, I, I value these people over, you know, genuinely, you know, I, I want to help people. And that's, that's a thing of mine is I want to help them. And so I will guide them, you know, even if they're like, we're kind of feeling this other person, like, you know, okay. Um, you know, how they ask this and this and that, you know, try to help them out. Like, and then, you know, good luck, you know, and congratulations, you know, like I have, it's totally cool. Like, you know, hopefully they have that relationship with their, their photographer, you know, but yeah. You want anything else Theo? No. no. Awesome. I mean, no. all those were great. You know, I think, I think the bottom line is if you guys are listening to this podcast is really connecting with your clients on a deeper level and really getting to know them because the more you know about them as a couple, the more you're able to deliver right at the right. end of the day. And, and that's really important for them to like, to also to get to know you. And that's yeah. why like, I think one of the like drawbacks sometimes, even for myself is when clients contact you on Instagram and all they ask is what's your price, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's all they care about, which, you know, that's totally fine, but that may not be your ideal client because all they care about, about is price, yeah. right? But one thing I can give uh, all you listeners advice is like when someone contacts you through text message or Instagram or Facebook is try to get them on the phone. Yep. Try to get them on the phone or get to, you know, try to get, have a meeting or something like that because having that, you know, f phone call or even face to face, it it's again, it's about the connection, yep. right? It's hard to do on text messages because it's, you know, you, you it may go the wrong way, right? The way you deliver that text message and it's just more difficult because like you're going back and forth. They may not respond immediately and then like, you know, it's just more of a cumbersome for, for the couple too because, you know, they're not able to ask you all those questions right away, right? right, right so right. Yeah. unless that's their ideal way of communication due to their schedule or something, which is another question yeah. I'll ask clients, like what is the best way to communicate? Um but you know, I'll, I'll I'll let them know at least one of our meetings has to be on the phone, FaceTime, or in person. Um, 
like I have a client right now who she can only text message and we've had, but we have had a FaceTime meeting and they're flying in from I think North Carolina to do a wedding and totally understand. But yeah, at least I, t- I told her from the very beginning, let's get on the phone, you know, let's have a little human experience for a moment, you know, and uh, we scheduled the time, got on the phone and she had said that, um, you know, she really appreciated that. So did, so did her fiance and, um, yeah, having that connection. And then also like what you're going off of Mike, um, <clears throat> another one is finding out what are they, what are they looking for? Are they looking for how much you deliver or, you know, what, what you actually are delivering, you know, what do they appreciate more the quantity over quality or quality over quantity? So, yeah. right. Yeah. So something I wanted to ask you, Mikey and Nick, actually, cause I feel like it's something I struggle with personally, and I know a lot of other photographers and just any creatives in general struggle with is how do you guys deal with that question when you get the text, what's your price? And if they're consistent on that, if they just want to know your price, how do you actually go about handling that conversation? Yeah, so I think I've talked about this on my social media before, is when someone contacts you on Instagram they're they're probably shopping around, right? So you have to think about it from their perspective. They're already like shopping around. They're just looking for prices. But that what I would recommend is have them even just fill out a contact form, right? Have them send them your website link and have them fill it out because if they ask for the price and that's their first question, like how do how do you do they even know that you're available, right? Mm-hmm. That's Typically, the first I would recommend that's the first question you would would ask them um, right off the bat because if you're not available, then you're just wasting time. Yeah, I I was gonna say that kind of the same thing. I ask them what the date of the wedding is, and they'll tell me, and I will let them know. You know, I'm available on that date, and um, I just tell them straight up my I tell them my starting price. And like, you know, for a collection, I inform them that I have other options available. I get, I tell them the other options. Like I have, you know, this is my starting price for my starting package. If you guys are interested in something more of a, you know, full day or less time, you know, we can go over that, what pricing is for that, you know, but I, I go off my starting, my starting package, you know, which is a six hour and, um, that's more recent too. I changed it to six hour. Um, But, uh, I let them, I let them know straight up, you know, this is my starting price. And, uh, actually on my website, I have my, my, um, it's it's for the photographers out there that want to know, should I put my website or uh, price on my website? Should I, should I not? I, I put my starting price. I used to put every price as a complete breakdown. Um, and it kind of goes, kind of goes both ways, you know, or like kind of one in the same, you know, I put my starting or my full breakdown of pricing and, what it does is it it clients get to see that and they already go into a conversation with you knowing what they're what they're about to get into if they see your website if they're hitting you up on Instagram or something like that I usually refer them to my website and ask them if, what their availability is and then you know give them my starting price yeah. but for the most part I like that the that they're coming in knowing that this is this is what I charge this is my work and um you know, they're already pretty much on, you know, you know, it's kind of coming down to, you know, me and another photographer or me and two other photographers. Cause they know my price. They know, you know, there's, they know my style. They have an idea. Now we're just getting to meet as people. And, and then I'll give them a full breakdown of my pricing. You know, once we've connected, I get something like a contact um, info and stuff like that. I can send them a, um, a, uh, like a full proposal or a, a brochure and let them know, you know, like this is, this is what it is. Um, when I used to not have my pricing on there, I used to have the like contact me for pricing and stuff. I would get tons of inquiries and they were nobody, you know, they didn't know what they were, you know, coming into. And so they were like, you know, either really trying to lowball or, or haggle or, you know, stuff like that, or, you know, uh, just a lot of different expectations. And for me, I feel it works for me, but yeah, no, I t- I'll just tell them straight up my starting price. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, those are good points. I, I think too, is like when someone contacts you and sends you a DM on Instagram and they just ask for the price, right? My initial inclination is that they've 
like I said before, they're already shopping around. So I don't mind giving them like my starting price, just like what Nick's saying. It's a good yeah. idea to kind of give that. So to see if they're within your budget, but what I would recommend is try to get them on the phone. If you can get them on the phone or have them fill out your contact form. So now you have their information, like their email, so you can actually follow up. Yeah. And so that's even better. Um, but overall, like that's may not be your ideal client, right? If they just right. send you all they want is pricing. Cause I get that all the time on Google business page on Instagram, which is totally fine, but don't stress out on that. I, I think a lot of people kind of get too stressed about like, you know, what should I text back? I was like, well, man, just keep it simple. Text yeah. them your starting price and just move on. If they don't fill it out, then there's more clientele that is going to contact you. And that kind of, you know, goes to my next question and maybe the next topic. So let's kind of move on to marketing side here. And I think it's a very popular topic. A lot of people want to know like how wedding photographers market themselves to their clients, right? Because it's very competitive out there. Um, especially in Southern California. I mean, there's so many wedding photographers, but um, there are a ton of clients. There's a lot of people that get married every single year. So let me ask you guys this. So in terms of marketing, what are you guys doing right now to, you know, to like capture those clients? Let's start with Nick. So for me, they for this year, it's actually been a lot more organic. Um, but what I'm doing for that for that, for my audience is Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and I, and my Google, my Google business page. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and what I'm, what I'm doing is trying to stay up with it as much as I can, um, uh, for clients to, or photographers, clients, you know, uh, any, you know, anyone to, see what I'm up to, see my work, you know, try to stay on there, um, con you know, consistently, uh, post at least one, two posts a week, you know, at the bare minimum, if I could, it would be every day, which I'm going to be moving, uh, towards within the next few months and start scheduling posts, um, for Instagram, start utilizing that tool. But, um, yeah, posting my work to my Google, my Google page, um, posting it to Facebook, which you can connect your Instagram and Facebook together. So that makes that pretty easy and Twitter and, uh, uh, constantly posting. And when I do go outside of that, I will, you know, I'll do some Google ads. I'll do Instagram ads. And, uh, really, uh, if you do set up ads, make sure you, you know, you focus on, you know, really what you're looking for. Don't just throw out that you, you know, you cover all of California or all the United States, you know, like, like do what, you know, you feel you can do, you know, what you're ready for. And, uh, so like in, you know, when I do my like SEO stuff or, you know, my map for my Google, um, uh, oh, that's another thing. SEO, we'll get in that in a second, but, um, uh, I'll, you know, I'll put, you know, what areas I'm willing to travel to or what areas, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to advertise towards and, uh, you know, uh, really work on my SEO and, uh, for those ads and, yeah. So constantly post, uh, consistently post and, uh, Google ads, Instagram ads, Facebook ads. I did Yelp, um, for a while and Yelp is honestly amazing. Um, it's really, really, really cool tool to ha to use. And, uh, and then for, I think it was 2021 through 2022. I also, for a while I was on, uh, the not, yeah. Gotcha. How about you, Theo? You know, I think this is a really eye-opening conversation for me because marketing is actually something I struggle with personally. Mm -hmm. Again, because I feel like I'm such a beginner in wedding photography. But um, I think so being active on social media is a huge thing. So right now I'm actually working on, I have content lined up that's scheduled. So I'm working on that right now to post on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Uh, not so much Twitter yet, but um, maybe. Uh, yeah, so just having content lined up and having that personal relationship, even with an audience, I think is huge. So putting yourself out there as more than just a photographer, but as also as a human being and being relatable, I think that's a very good marketing strategy as a wedding photographer. Um yeah, and so right now it's just social media for me and also 
posting myself on Facebook groups and pages and getting my name out there and, you know, posting my work so that people can even see it in the first place. As far as ads go, I haven't looked into that or I haven't uh, done that just yet. But marketing is something that I'm still learning heavily. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many ways to to do organic organic marketing, right? I mean, we can literally, I mean, back in the day when social media wasn't around, you know, I mean, you would just, you know, meet up with vendors or you contact the venue, right? So, so some of the other ways you can market yourself actually is actually just connecting with other vendors, right? Yep. And I've talked about this very extensively. I have another podcast about this, but um, that's another way to really like increase your brand awareness. Awareness is just through having more connections in the industry because then people will refer you if they're busy. And that's why it's like, you know, I think wedding photographers is a great community to have, right? Um, there's Facebook groups. We create our own community. And right. so we help each other out, um, especially when something, you know, something really bad happens, right? Let's say you get COVID and you can't make it. Right. You know, you rely on other photographers to help you out or if you need a second shooter. Um, so, that could, actually, I can ties into my next question is, what's your thoughts on second shooting um, as wedding photographers and how has that helped you guys improve your skills? So really yeah. quick, I think a couple important points to make. Um, like like Theo was saying, mm -hmm. uh, as far as like the, or, you know, like um, how, do, you know, marketing. The marketing and all that really quickly. Um, turn the camera around, show your face, mm -hmm. um, sh you know, talk, is is, is uh, uncomfortable as it may be. Turn around, turn that thing around, and talk as if you're talking to your client. You know, you're talking to your your friends, your you know your family. Your you know they uh, they you know it's a big one. And then yeah. also, you can connect with vendors. Uh, if you go to a wedding, there's vendors there, and um, have your ha oh, that's another one. I have my business cards. I try to leave them anywhere I can, and then also uh, like uh, bridal shows. Um, or, you know, like wedding, you know, wedding sh show uh, conventions, stuff like that is another one. Um, as far as second shooting goes, I love second shooting. It's so much fun. Um, that has like... Hey, exp I, explain real quick what's, what's second shooting like. So like maybe some people that are starting oh, out, right? All all. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, second shooting is where... You have a like, uh, for instance, I'll, I'm just going to use our experience. Um, I ha I'm a wedding photographer. I booked my client, and they uh, they want a second shoot or they want some photos done, but they're getting say the getting readies are the same time. It's a big wedding. There's a lot going on. You're you know, um, you can have you can have assistance there, but maybe you're not sure if you can cover everything. You hire a second shooter, and a second shooter comes with their camera, um, you subcontract them. Um, they come with their camera, camera gear. They, uh, they set up and, um, uh, you have them cover things that maybe you can't cover. You have, uh, you have multiple cameras out there and different, uh, different, you know, point of views, you know, when you're doing the couple photos, they can be doing the, uh, cocktail hour, you know, getting, uh, photos like that, that some couples may not ever see cause you know, they, they didn't have a second shooter. Um, you can be in two places at once. So while uh, while I'm over with the bride doing all the bridal getting ready and the bridesmaids and the details, the second shooter could be with the groom doing all the the groom details, groom getting readies, um, reception photos. You know when it, it's it's honestly great to have a second shooter. Like you'll you'll have so many more photos to go through. Maybe there's shots that you know they they saw that you you could have missed. You know. Um, you know, pictures of maybe you're doing the, uh, um, the groom and mother dance and bride is with grandma off in the corner, you know, having an emotional moment or with, you know, mo new mother-in-law or what other situation you can, uh, you could be focused on one thing while you have an, your second shooter on a, on a whole nother. So, Oh yeah. And it's, it's a great way to really get into the wedding industry. Yeah. Um, especially if you're starting out, you don't have a lot of weddings under your belt. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, finding other photographers to work with is also a very good experience because that's 
basically what I did when I first started. I didn't run no ads. Um, it was all organic, and I just wanted to connect with as many people as possible to put my name out there. And so, like, and then eventually, when I got very established and I started looking for other photographers to work for me, um, it's really great. Like, it's a great value for both parties, right? Um, and you know, like the second shot for me. So, um, I think a lot of people can learn. Um, from other photographers starting out because you're not going to know every situation, right? In a wedding, it's just impossible. Every wedding's different, but, you know, having, uh, uh, having assisted other photographers, you're able to like learn their style. You may not copy their style exactly, but you can understand like the workflow, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the posing techniques or, or how they direct the couple or how they direct family photos or how they, you know, their lighting techniques, right? So, Maybe different point of views on yeah. what different from yours, like you're used to catching uh, flat lays. We can get into flat it, lays it, here. Yep. You, you might always catch it like this, but maybe they have a different way of overlapping the flat lay and catching it with either like a macro lens or uh, or tubes or something different. You know, using a prism. You know, like exactly. Mikey, yeah. he first threw out a prism back back in 2021, and I was like, "What you doing?" Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you just you just don't know what you know, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Like Theo, you've shot with actually a, a large majority of different wedding photographers, right? Yeah, I've shot with a few. Yeah. yeah, so I think a huge thing you gain from second shooting with different wedding photographers is just the experience. You learn how they run their business. You learn how they run the wedding day. You learn what they do and why they do the things you, they do. So you can just like pick and choose here and there different habits and different ways of doing things from different wedding photographers and bring that into your own business and your own way of doing your wedding days. And I think like just gaining the experience and like second shooting, even though I, I fell in love with wedding photography after doing my own first wedding, uh, second shooting made me love it even more. Like I get to go to these cool places, these cool venues, meet all these cool people, you know, and show off these cool photos to this couple that will love them. And like, it's a really, really fun experience second shooting without even the, <laughs> you get to second shoot and have fun at these weddings without the stress of the client relationship yet. You know, if you're not ready to handle that, you get to shoot and learn the wedding day before having to necessarily deal with the client relationship end of it you know you get to do all the things you want to do first to know if you even like wedding photography in the first place you might think you like it but after you second shoot more you know you'll learn and you'll just gain more experience yeah absolutely um just real quick nick before uh so with second shooting um i i think it's also very important that like you find a photographer that you kind of admire and really look up to, right? When you first exactly. when you first start, because like if you second shoot mm -hmm. for, and I've had some bad experiences, you know, second shooting with other photographers when I first started, and it just put a bad taste in my mouth. Um, yeah. So I had a different experience. But when I found like really good photographers to work for, it just made it amazing. Like I had a good time, you know, they were great to work with, and they really like helped me improve my skills and like really helped me out. And so like it's super important that you find, you know, someone local too. like, don't try to go out of your way to go like hundred miles out because yeah. you want to find someone that's local and mm -hmm. just, it's easier to can make, communicate with them and meet up. Um, but, but yeah, that's something you're going to have to like really, you know, dig through like, cause there's hundreds of photographers in every single area. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, a big part of that, you know, again, connection, just like you do with your clients, you know, you're going to want to uh, connect with that person that you're going to be working with. You can't just show up to a wedding and know how to do a wedding and know how the wedding's going to be. And the photo the main photographer, the lead photographer is going to have, <clears throat> it's going to have a, a lot of communication, the whole day broken down, you know, and it's better to get with them prior to that. And, you know, and if you, you know, if you really like their, their style, their, you know, them, you know, you're going to want to do, you know, work with them, you know, over and over. And like us, uh, we, we met in person way prior to any work we did and, you know, kind of, kind of got a feel for each other, you know, and then went out and did some, some, you know, some random stuff and then found out we both like hiking. We both like, you know, doing, doing different stuff like outdoor stuff. And, you know, we're, you know, we found out we're near, you know, uh, relatively close, you know, and, you know, hang out outside of that as buds, you know, and then we're able to, 
to really, you know, go over like game plans for weddings, you know, and that's another thing is, um, you know, most, most wedding photographers, if you, if you want a second shoot, they, it's one thing to have just fo- extra photos of the wedding. It's another to have, you know, that person, you know, no, you know, knowing what you, what you want done, you know, for what you look for, for in a wedding. So, you know, you can just trust that that person's going to go second shoot for you, for the grooms getting ready. And you know, those photos are going to be, you know, bangers, you know, you don't have to like also rush out there to go check and, you know, babysit them, you know? Um, so yeah, building a relationship with that lead photographer and vice versa, if you're just going to start getting into hiring seconds, um, you know, have some meetings with them, you know, check if you vibe with them as well, you know, cause just as much as you'll, you'll meet interesting leads, you'll meet interesting, uh, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like what you said is, um, uh, very important to me as well as, um, second shooting, you build a lot of relationships. Like you said, you know, you'll, you'll make a lot of connections with these photographers and that's even led me to, I second shot with one studio and I I got recommended to another studio that I'm working with now. And like, I love it even more. Like it's, um, building connections is a huge, huge thing. Exactly. And, um, there's more, there's, there's a ton of things we can do as wedding photographers to connect, right? There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of like uh, wedding photography groups on Facebook and hopefully there's like a local a local photographer group in your area that actually meets up in person, right? Because I've attended many. And that's also a great way to like just sift through different photographers and see if they kind of fit your personality. Because like what Nick was saying, like you want to connect with people that you like. You know, you're going to be working with them for eight to ten hours. You're going to make sure like that, you know, you guys kind of vibe too. Because if I was looking for a second photographer, right, I'm looking for people that also match my you know, my values, my professionalism, because it's a reflection on me, on my clients, right? right. I want to make sure that it, whatever, whoever I hire reflects the values I reflect. Um, so it's that, and, but given that fact too, like if you're starting out and you are reaching out to wedding photographers, mm-hmm. and this is what I should have done, you know, way back then is like, just like, have more meetings because when I first reached out to other wedding photographers, I just kind of like reached out on like email and Instagram, but we didn't really meet. And so like now when I'm looking for other photographers, I, I try to meet in person because you get, you know, you have a better handle on like personality wise, if you get along and stuff like that, like that. Um, so with, with Nick, you know, we, we kind of connected kind of right away because we both have similar, you know, um, hobbies and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, like when you first start out, just connect with as many wedding photographers and I highly recommend that you stay within your area. Um, so it's just better that you guys can meet in person, right? What that also does as us, somebody who goes in and second shoots, um, when you meet somebody local in your area, like I did with Mike, you know, especially when I was relatively new to the game, uh, I didn't know where, you know, a lot of these places were or what sort of permit, you know, status and Mike has, you know, been in there for so long, you know, you have already gone through the paces. I walked in, Hey Nick, here's a list of my favorite locations because you're going to be going there with me, you know, and, um, you know, here's a list of, you know, where they are, like, here's the ones that they need permits. Here's the ones where I got these photos, you know, and it was like, wow, you know, like, that, that's amazing, you know, being able to, you know, have, have that resource, you know, and that's a whole nother, whole nother thing is having that resource of, uh, of, you know, locations, permit stuff, um, you know, all, all that kind of stuff, different studios that, uh, you know, like, like kind of like Athea was saying, like they're, you know, you'll get recommendations to other photographers, other studios, stuff like that. Awesome. Anything else you want to add on, on that aspect? Yeah. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's all good. Now. Um, yeah. Oh, second. Why, another reason why second shooting mm-hmm. is a great thing to start with is, um, you know, you second shoot for people in these different studios, and if you if you like them and you vibe with them and you like their style and how they run things, eventually, you know, you'll work your way up to associate shooting or lead shooting for them. Yep. You know, like with Mikey now, I'm gonna be 
associate shooting for him in June, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing wedding for him and for some other studios I work with as well. I worked my way up from assisting to second shooting to eventually lead shooting to gain all that experience, you know, before taking on more weddings on my own and having that experience that couples will want to see that you have, you know. It's just a great way to work your way up in the industry and build a name for yourself. Absolutely. And yeah. um, great, great point on that. Like, um, so another way, like, cause when you're first starting out, right. As a, like you're getting your feet wet, like you may not have as many clients. So, you know, trying to go full time could be very difficult, right? You may not have enough income to like pay all your bills. Yeah. So that's why we recommend that like, you know, as that's another source of income. For you to second shoot, connect with those amazing wedding photographers, and eventually what Thea was saying is that now you can, you know, you can be an associate and you can make a little bit more money than second shooting because now you have more responsibilities. Um, but but if you are starting out, like you may have to like really diversify too, just to get your name out there. Because um, when I first started, I did I, I did everything like just because like I couldn't, you know, I was booking like maybe five to 10 weddings a year mm -hmm. when I first started. So it's like, it's not enough to make, you know, a yearly income. So I supplemented my income with second shooting, associate, you know, shooting and also doing, still doing family photos. Um, to this day, you know, I still do that because it's just a good in source of income. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do headshots. So you can still do other stuff. Just make sure your primary focus is still weddings as long as you have the time. Right. Right, Nick? Right. Yeah, I agree. And kind of going back to like the first question um, and going from what you just said, I also recommend people to not just uh, dive fully in, you know, um, really go into wedding photography, um, photography in, in general with a game plan. And I would say take time before you go full time, you know, take time before you go full time. Don't don't rush into, you know, buying just a bunch of gear that you, you know, that you see that's, you know, trending or something like on YouTube or something like that, you know, really do your, you know, study on it, decide what system you're going to get in yourself into, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. And, uh, you know, um, as much as you want to get out of that nine to five or, you know, some people a lot earlier than that, <laughs> um, as much as you want to get out, have patience, try to do it the right way. Cause if you just hop in and go full time, um, and you know, quit your, quit your job, you know, that's, that could lead to, you know, could lead to failure. Cause you're, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be wanting to, uh, learn or, you know, you're going to be having to learn like, well, like what we were saying, you know, as far as like getting experience, building your portfolio, uh, learning how to do business, you know, um, you know, I was fortunate enough for my experiences you know, and like, um, but I kind of dove straight in and there has been some hard, hard times, you know? Um, and you know, too, like there's been some moments where it's like, all right, well, I don't know, it might be time to hang up the hat. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's a blessing, you know, and there's been a big, you know, a big, huge learning curve as far as that goes, you know? So take time, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, really find out what you, what you like the most, you know, but yeah, definitely, go go into it you know with ease don't just jump in full time right yeah fortunately for me as well like you like you did i also jumped straight into it and i was just fortunate enough like uh two weeks after i quit my nine to five i actually booked my first wedding right away because i had the time and energy mm -hmm. and the motivation to go into it so I don't think it's a smart thing to do but sometimes for some people you know it's the push that you need and it was what I needed to be fully committed to wedding photography and be more willing to put more effort into it um, quitting made me more motivated and um, it worked out for me fortunately but it's just the mindset you have and if you're willing to put in the effort because running a wedding business is definitely a lot more than people put on it's a lot more work it's not as easy it's not just working the weekends you know mm -hmm. it's it's more than that exactly um and I, I i think sometimes you know i think the wedding photography business is maybe too glorified sometimes people don't see like behind the scenes right of what we go through you know i mean literally we're there like not just eight hours we're there 
before, earlier, we're doing all the communication prior to the to the wedding, right? Consultation. So there's a lot to it than just shooting a wedding. And then also after that, we do post editing, mm-hmm. which could take time too. And then, you know, setting up a website. I mean, there's a lot of things we have to think about. But, but yeah, you did make a good point, Theo, is like when you make that commitment to go full time, I think it really makes your your mindset like stronger because now you get like okay this is all i got i gotta go <laughs> yeah. all in right for some people that may just be doing this as a part-time gig that's totally fine mm-hmm. like that's what i did for many years before i fully went in because i i knew for me i i i didn't have the confidence yet to really like okay can i make a living out of this um can i really do this just doing wedding photography mm-hmm. but when i knew like okay you know it started getting consistent um, year after year, I was like, you know what, I could, I could, I could probably do this, and that's when I was like, my mind just clicked, and I was like, I could do way more, you know, in, I could do way more than what I was doing now because I have more free time, right? Yeah. So there, there, there is like a balance you have to, you know, to kind of think about because like now you have more free time. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna watch Netflix all day, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, so but there's a lot of things you can do, like what we we're talking about earlier, like social media, connect with your vendors, so that's like a daily grind that we got to do every single month, you know, year to make our, our business sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, let's kind of switch gears a little bit because I think a lot of people want to listen to gear talk yep. uh, on this YouTube and podcast. If you guys are listening on, you know, Spotify, we are going to post this on YouTube. Um, and right now I actually have the Canon R3 recording us <laughs> so, um, Dude, that thing is chunky yeah it's 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 a massive camera um but let's talk about like what we really need in terms of gear to accomplish shooting a wedding so let's start actually start with theo on this one in your opinion because there's a lot of debate over this and i have my own opinions of course but what's your thoughts on like you know on lenses and camera bodies yeah so I tend to go the more minimal style when it comes to weddings and wedding gear. Um, I'm not bringing a bunch of light stands, tripods, flashes, and all that. Um, I think just to get started, uh, all you really need is, I think, two good, reliable camera Mm -hmm. bodies, or at least rent one for your first wedding, because that's very, very important. And I think those camera bodies should also be able to have dual slots for memory cards, just for backup, you know, you never know what happens or what can happen. And really, I think that's all you need. I think most modern cameras these days from every brand is more than good enough for a wedding day. And just to get started, I think that's all you need. That's the necessities, those and good, reliable memory cards, a good storage at home, you know, back it up to the air, back Mm -hmm. it up to at least two or three hard drives, you know, you don't want to lose these like invaluable photos. And I think that's all that's necessary to start wedding photography. And then, um, you know, as well as you'll always want to get more than just the kit lens that comes with your camera. For me personally, I think that's huge, you know. Um, I think to start off, a zoom a zoom lens is, is huge. You know, you only have to make a one big investment into like, say, a 24 to 70 2.8 that'll get you through 90% of a wedding day. If anything, you might need a telephoto, maybe if the venue um, needs it. But besides that, I think that's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I agree. Um, <clears throat> two reliable camera bodies that you've definitely done research in. You had time to practice. You know, I know not everyone's going to be able to just hop in with two cameras. Um, there are, you know... Uh, or op, uh, websites and different camera shops where you can rent an, an additional body and lenses as well. Um, for me, I think if you're just getting into it, you know, definitely get yourself a camera body, learn that camera body through in and throughout because you can't tell them to hold off on the kiss um, when the wedding ends so you can figure out how what I what where your ISO button's at or knob is at. Um, uh, but for me, I'm currently on two camera bodies. I'm, I'm on the two, uh, two Sony a seven threes. And as far as lenses go, um, I actually, I do agree. I think that, uh, a 24 to 70 and then a, a, a type of telephoto lens, either an 85 or something above that, um, 
Uh, I I uh, personally shoot on an 85. Um, I have rented a 70 to 200. I don't I don't currently own one, um, but that is my goal. And right now I shoot all primes, living all all dangerously and stuff. But um, <laughs> I'm actually I I am going to be getting another 24 to 70 soon. I'm not sure if it's that one or the Tamron. Um, but uh, um, flashes on camera flashes are a must for your for your camera. Um, no matter what you have to have, uh, if you have two cameras, obviously two on camera flashes or speed lights, the camera or the flashes that go on top of your camera. Um, even if your camera, the camera brand that you, or, you know, the camera you buy has a flash, a little pop up, you know, it'll get the job done. But if you want really professional photos that will stand out, I recommend a speed light of sorts. Um, the new ones, uh, the ones that we use, there's Godox V1s, um, Godox or Flashpoint, same exact brand. Flashpoint is Adorama.com. It's their uh, proprietary brand. That is Godox. It's just renamed. Um, but the V1, you can, um, as far as like accessories, they're all magnetic. It's a round head. Uh, they also have the Godox V860 Mark II, Mark Ones. Those are your standard speed lights. You can get stuff like MagMod. Um you know, even MagMod for the round flashes as well. It's a magnetic uh, system um, uh, for uh, flash diffusers and, and modifiers and stuff like that. And uh, it goes on magnetically. They're really, really cool. Um, but yeah, two cameras, two flashes, uh, preferably two cameras that have dual slots and uh, for, get four SD cards. I recommend, you know, more the merrier you can get away with 64 um gigabyte cards but i recommend you know as much as you much as you can and uh, as much as your camera will allow and uh you know check this what kind of speed you know you get those cards and stuff but yeah having good reliable cards i um i use the sandus extreme pro 128 gigabytes i have four of those and well i have a lot more than that but <laughs> that are in my camera and uh a good computer, something that, uh, you know, if you're going to be running Lightroom and Photoshop, you know, to do your photos or even capture one, um, you want a computer that has something with a little more than eight gigabytes of RAM. I know Apple's a little bit different. Uh, you can't go wrong with any of the new like M1, M2 chip, um, MacBooks, MacBook Pros, all that stuff like that. Those are really great and made for those kind of, you know, content creators and stuff. A really good computer. Um, you can get away with something cheaper. It's just going to uh, take you a little longer like I did. I had a cheaper computer and, uh, you know, you hit next and the, you just have to wait a second for the next photo to pop up. So it makes it a little bit of a hassle and makes the experience not as fun <laughs> as far as editing goes. Um, and then, yeah, so if you do, if you are somebody who is into the primes, I'm currently into the primes. Um, I will be getting, I had a 24 to 70. And uh, I don't know if you know this, Theo, but um, I had uh, some issues with that. And I bought my lens off of uh, Amazon. And because of that, I didn't have any warranties on it. And so oh, wow. I had to uh, turn around and, you know, get rid of that thing. Um, I was able to get like a, I think it's called a rebate or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I used the money to buy myself a 35 and then a 24 Prime. And just because I... Needed something kind of quick and um, wanted to give it a try. So currently have um, three primes right now, a 24 millimeter, uh, 1.8, uh, Samyang, which is an amazing lens, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, 35 uh, Sigma 1.4 and uh, Sony 85. Perfect. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you do go that route, you can definitely get away with a lot with a 35 and an 85. Uh, just know that sometimes the 85s don't have a far enough reach, you know, depending on the venue. Um, luckily with the Sony's, you can go into a uh, Super 35 crop mode, which essentially makes the lens into a 135. Uh, doesn't give you the same quality as like the Sony 135, but it, it'll punch in. And then um, as far as this 35 goes, there has been one time, and it was actually when I was second shooting for you, Mike, um, one time where I was outside doing family photo or like, you know, like it was during reception and uh, it was the wedding in Oceanside. And uh, we were doing like, you were inside doing dance photos and stuff. I was outside because they had events going on over there and they had me um, doing table shots, uh, table photos. And um, I think the groom was with them. They were doing like shots and stuff like that. And they 
because of where grandma sat, you know, she couldn't necessarily move on the opposite side. It was a wall. And my 35 millimeter was just cutting off the two people on the left and the right. And then had I had a 24 or been able to just zoom, you know, that was like a situation where I had to, you know, I went in to buy a 24 and like, so when I'm on a reception, I usually have um, a 24 millimeter, you know, after ever all the formal stuff is done when it's reception time, I'll throw in a super wide, you know, sometimes it's even the 24 and a 35. I don't even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just clarify really quick for newbies out there. So a prime lens is a fixed focal length. So the yeah. most popular ones are 35, 85. Yeah. So which means you can't zoom in and out. And there are pros and cons to both, right? Mm -hmm. While like a telephoto lens, they are basically a wide range. So typically like a, a long one is a 70, 70 to 200 millimeter. So you can zoom in, in and out between those ranges which could be very beneficial if you are like, you know, moving around and you're trying to, you know, zoom into like a certain like, you know, like like ceremonies are very useful for that. Um, but primes though could also be very beneficial in low light conditions. So, because, because you can, you know, you can open up the aperture a little bit more so there's more light, but it's also going to give you that dreamy look that what people like the bouquet look compared to some of the telephoto lens right out there, which like a kit lens, for example, like what Thea was saying, when you buy a camera body, um, typically, like, let's say you, you go to Best Buy. And I, uh, the most common ones, like when I first really, really started, I bought, like, I think a Canon T5. And it had, like, a 24 to 105. It's like H, uh, It had an aperture of f4. So, which means that f4 is, you know, it's it's going to get stuff in focus, but it's not going to be, a, like, an 85 one four like, like a Sony, right? So, you're not going to get that blurred background, um, um compared to like, you know, like uh, a zoom lens. But the take- plus, plus if it's nighttime, you're cranking the ISO like crazy. Yeah, 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 exactly. So there are, you know, pros and cons to both type of lenses. But what I would recommend, let's say you only have one camera body and someone hired you for a wedding. So what you can do is that you can actually go to like a camera re a rental store or there's a lot online now. Like one of our buddy Brent does it all the time. And so if you don't have- you know, the lenses, you can actually try them out and see if it works for you instead of investing a lot of money up front to like prime lenses, which could be very expensive. And even zoom lenses now are very expensive. Um, so that's one way to kind of like figure out what lens you you prefer because I've, I've used both and and um, I do like both d depending on the situations. Like for example, if I go into reception, sometimes I'll go into primes because it's just easier for me to get focus right on certain you know shots i want to get um and then let's talk let's kind of switch gears a little bit because i really want to talk about this too in regards to lighting right because i've met i've met some photographers over the years that have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to like even flash and a lot of them i've actually met one again I'm trying to keep this non-hostile <laughs> i don't want to get like hate mail in the in my email but I've had photographers, they just crank up the ISO like super high for a reception. And what, what happens is like your, the images become like more of that vintage look. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like very bad depending on your camera body. So there are several ways to go about this. But I think we all agree that just having a speed light, right, makes a huge difference when it comes to like low light conditions. Mm -hmm. So um, Theo, right now you're using the Godox V1, right? Right. Yeah. So do you prefer to kind of just have that on camera most of the time? Yeah. So for the reception, it's usually past sunset. So it's rather dark and it's indoors most of the time. Uh, I think having like a speed light on your camera is a necessity also. That's something I missed while listing the gear you need for a wedding. I think a flash is another necessity that you have to have unless your wedding's just fully in the daytime outside. But um, yeah, I think having a flash is completely necessary because cranking up your ISO, even if it might look okay on your camera while you're taking it, you'll get home and you look at the photo blown up on your bigger monitor and you're like, oh man, like uh, I missed this moment, right? It's an unusable photo almost just because I didn't have a flash that night, you know? I think having the flash, um, it also expands like the kind of photos that you're able to get, you know? You can be a little more creative if you want. You're able to capture the things you need to. Yeah, I think I think having a flash for receptions is a must. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as I go, um, 
well, really quick, going off of like those who prefer to crank up the ISO and want to stick with like natural light and stuff like that. Again, going back to learn your camera, um, know the capabilities of your camera, understand like megapixel, um, like go into a lot of detail, but to give a long story short, the higher the megapixel typically will have a, a lot more grain, the higher the ISO. Like if you have a, say like a Canon R5 or a Sony a7 R4, something like that, and you crank the ISO to 8,000, uh, because of the way the megapixel works and all that, it's going to be way, it's going to be way a different look than like if you have a a7, a7 IV, a7 III, a Canon R6, something with like 30 megapixels or, or under, um, you're going to get a cleaner look. That's a, kind of a, well, it's not the reason, but there's um, a lot of video cameras and video, uh, can't say that right now, uh, video cameras have uh, like lower megapixels like the, the FX three, I think has like 12 megapixels and um, it's going to be amazing for low light, you know, video, you're not popping off flashes. You, you know, you have led lights and stuff like that. Um, as far as I go, yeah, I, I use the two on camera flashes for, you know, reception time, you know, all, all else, like even, you know, if the lighting in the room looks good, you know, I'm still going to use those, those flashes. I'll get my, uh, I'll dial in my ambient light first, pop off the flash to fill in any like shadows and to, you know, get a cleaner image. Me personally, I, I do use quite a bit of flash, um, especially during reception time, you know, and then for like couples portraits and any rooms I use off camera flash. Um, and I am also in the, the Godox flashpoint system. And as far as my flashes go, I have two of the V ones. I have two 8200 pros and I have a, uh, Flashpoint Explorer 300 Pro and a Flashpoint Explorer 600 Pro, uh, or 600, sorry, not the Pro. Um, but I like to, I actually like to use the, the 200s. Um, I'll put grids on them using the Magmon system. I usually either do stadium light lighting, which is kind of like, they're both, um, both in like one off to the right, one off to the left. Um, I'm losing my train of thought like crazy. I, I have this, the system going, but I, that, or I'll put them uh, diagonal from each other on the dance floor to kind of get like a rim light on the, on the dancers or any stuff like that, or more of like a, like a stadium style lighting. And like, again, for the rim lights and I'll use my on camera to kind of, you know, fill that in and stuff like that. Um, but that's something I've been getting into. That's awesome. Um, so we're about to wrap this up, but before we let, you know, you guys go is like, I, I like to ask like a couple personal questions before we wrap this up. So, um, actually let's start with, uh, cause Nick may give me a long ass <laughs> answer here. <laughs> so let's start with Theo. Um, so where do you see yourself in five years regarding wedding photography? In five years. So I think, so I see myself doing weddings hopefully in other states as well as other countries is the goal my goal is to eventually become a travel wedding photographer and do it all over the world because i'll get paid to travel and get to do what i love at the same time you know and in five years though i think i'll probably be booking a lot more weddings on my own and doing less second shooting most likely and probably forming some team of my own as well like you did mike you know having some second shooters or assistants or people getting into wedding photography as well i want to help other wedding photographers that are trying to get into it more you know um because a huge thing for me getting into photography in general before i even did weddings was i streamed editing graduation photos or family portraits i did on on twitch tv and i just That's live streamed awesome. and I know I gained an audience and I learned a lot from other photographers that were joining my chat or I would join their live streams of them editing photos as well. And I just built like a bunch of relationships and I learned so much from other photographers. You know, I just want to reciprocate that because I know there's so much YouTube content out there, but I know like being one-on-one -on -one or having like conversations one-on-one -on -one with people outside of YouTube is so, so beneficial and you learn so much that you just can't learn from just youtube videos alone you know awesome um since you mentioned about destination weddings um where would your dream wedding would be or what like what style would that be which location like where would you want to go if you had like a, a pick of a, a dream wedding 
Ah, uh, dream wedding. That's an interesting question. Um, so, like I said earlier, I love candid photography. Yeah. I'm not too much for heavy flashes and stylized photography. I don't go for the Vogue look that often. Um, I'd probably, for destination, I think one of my dream destinations to shoot a wedding at is, um, I don't even know the exact location, but I think in Switzerland, they have these like green hills and I just want to do a wedding in the beautiful like green hills with mountains in the background or like a giant waterfall, you know, somewhere really natural and outdoorsy because I think that's more of my preferred venues and locations that I like to be at and just shoot in general because I love landscape photography as well. And if I can combine portraits with beautiful landscapes, then that's just the ideal situation. That's awesome. All right, Mr. Nick. All so right. where do you see yourself in five years with wedding photography? Well, listening to Theo, I gathered it up for a nice short answers. So. <laughs> um, in five years, I see myself uh, will have already started a YouTube channel for wedding photography tutorials and uh, probably even gear and gear talk as well. And uh, I see myself starting a, a team as well. Uh, something I'm gearing, gearing towards. Um, but yeah, a lot more weddings. Um, I don't know if I, I, I've done a few destinations already, uh, different stuff, and I have some stuff, uh, some weddings booked uh, coming up. One in um, one in Oregon, uh, one in Washington, and then um, a couple in Arizona. And um, I think I would like to go towards you know um, destinations as well, you know, and maybe having like a set team here in the Inland Empire, and you know, go, going out personally and doing. Uh, destination weddings and as far as my destination weddings go uh hawaii ireland france uh italy those are you know and then um i would love to uh, actually i'd love to go um I'm trying to remember his name right now um check out some of those locations that uh um Jilly, jiggy alejandrino oh, to, yeah, yeah dude yeah. oh my god mm -hmm. um yeah um uh, and uh, so those are some destination weddings that I, but yeah, definitely in the next five years, um, a major increase in the amount of weddings I have coming in, you know, for myself and uh, YouTube channel that's already in the works and uh, yeah, tutorial. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me for today's podcast. Um, any last words for um, new photographers out there, Nick? Uh, yeah. Uh, don't be, don't be afraid. Get out there get started. You can rent gear. Um, you, you know, nothing, you know, don't let yourself hold you back and, uh, get shooting. Theo. Um, don't be afraid. Like Nick said, you know, it's, it, it'll be scary to jump into it, but just, you know, try it out and see what you like. And, um, for wedding photography specifically, I think what Mike said earlier was a great point. Um, don't, discredit other types of um, photography shoots that you might get inquired about. Take on those family portraits, those graduate sessions, because you never know, you might build a relationship with those people and maybe you'll eventually end up shooting their wedding one day, you know? Oh, and as far as wedding photography goes and like a lot of candids come, whether or not you let your into candids, you know, uh, you will be shooting a lot of candids and during the weddings and, uh, if you're not too sure about that or if you want to get better at that, uh, street photography. Um, I actually learned that watching John John Branch on uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He recommended that, went out there, and that has made a huge difference in my candid photography. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Again, thank you guys for listening and watching on YouTube. We will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace out, Adios. guys.